Welcome to the fifth topic in this course. We're now looking at constructs. I keep changing my mind about the order. I said in the last video we're going to be looking at global and local variables. In this video, actually, I'm going to move that to the sub program, sub program video because it makes a lot more sense doing it that way. So there's a few things, a few new things we've got to cover. There's a few things we're going to cover in future videos. So sub programs, a few things we've covered already. And so there's not a massive amount of new stuff, admittedly, in this video. But we're going to begin by sort of following on slightly from the last video and we're sort of continuing to look at variables. So some programming languages require you to explicitly declare the data type of a variable before you can assign it value. So I mentioned in the last video that the, the data type of variables usually remains fixed during the execution and you often have to, before you assign it a value, you, you have to declare the data type. So some languages don't require this. So Python, for example, doesn't require explicit uh, declaration it does it implicitly so it happens automatically when you first assign a value so it's not a statement like this in C sharp and Java needed to declare so this um, so I should say this is just assignment in pseudocode so this is the edit cell pseudocode and int max height this is declaring this variable max height as an integer and this line of code is declaring uh, a variable called name as a string and it's assigning John to that variable so a lot of languages allow you to do two steps in one so you assign the initial value at the time of declaration um, and usually initialization refers to the first assignment of a value um, it has a few different meanings depending on the context and it can be a little bit complicated trying to work out or trying to associate the meaning with the context um, but in this sort of basic situation Initialization is the first assignment of a value to the variable, and we'll leave it at that, um, I think. So instead of just one value, you could have an expression to the right of the assignment operator, so this isn't necessarily about declaration anymore. Uh, so this variable in Python tax is, we have an expression, not just a single value to the side of it. We're going to work something out. It's going to be evaluated. So yeah, when the statement is executed, the expression is evaluated and the result is stored under tax. And declaration can serve two purposes. So it can reserve memory space and it is really to ensure that the compiler interprets and uses the instructions correctly. It depends on how the compiler is interpreting the instructions. Uh, but this is not necessarily on your course. You just might be wondering why some languages need it and some languages don't. Okay, so two words mentioned on the specification are ones that maybe you don't know, so we'll quickly go into them. It's not a massive amount to talk about, admittedly. So a command is I like this analogy. So a statement in programming is like a sentence in natural languages and a command is like a verb. So I can't take credit for this analogy but I do quite like it. So the, the command forms part of the statement so it's a doing word and like a verb is quite important, it's quite an important part of a sent sentence, a command is a very important part of a statement and a command instructs the computer to do something specific. So in Python, uh, this is a list of keywords in Python, um, admittedly I don't know all of them, I haven't used all of them, um, but a few of them really do stand out as being command words to me, so like break, um, continue, def for define, uh, import, etc. And I personally don't really say command that often, I say, well I, I, I don't refer to it as a command necessarily. I've noticed in a lot of American textbooks they use command a bit more often than I've seen it in other other sources and really it's a matter of taste whether you want to use it. I wouldn't worry too much about kind of forcing it into your vocabulary when you're talking about code but if it's something quite clear like these perhaps it'll be useful to call it a command and that's perhaps what Excel are asking for um, but I wouldn't worry a massive amount about it. Uh, conditionals are statements that evaluate to true or false so they evaluate to a boolean value so that's one or zero and they perform different actions depending on if the condition is met so this is the condition uh, b squared minus 4ac is less than zero uh, this is the discriminant in quadratics if you're wondering and if this is true so if this evaluates to true uh, no rule roots is printed and actually uh, conditionals form part of uh, something we'll look at next which is uh, selection uh, constructs So in programming there are three constructs, really fundamental constructs that control the flow of a program's execution. I like to think of them as building blocks uh, in your program. And so the, con the flow of a program is the order in which the statements are executed. So the path of the flow can be changed depending on these constructs. 
So the first one is sequence, and in the sequence construct, each line follows the previous line, so all the lines are executed. So really, just each line is executed following the previous line. So this would be your basic program. Your first couple of programs probably would be like this, just this. Um, and in selection construct, deci decisions are made that choose the program's execution. So the flow is kind of chosen based on the conditions. So what we were just looking at. So test is equal to five is our condition here, and this would be evaluated. So if this is true, this evaluated is true. Print test pass is executed. Otherwise, if it's false, uh, test fail is printed. And in a repetition construct, code is repeated. So another word for that is looped, in case you don't want to use the same word in the definition, until specified conditions are met. So again, this uses a condition. So this will be tested. If it's true or false, it'll be evaluated. If the user input is not equal to the password, then it will be asked to input it again. That's what this code does. And obviously, these three constructs are used together. You can't really have a very complicated program using just one of these constructs or, you know, using um, a couple of them you really have to build them and integrate them together to make your final program but that's it for this video hopefully it was useful uh, next up we're looking at input and output so yes thank you for watching